Okay, so I wanted to show everybody what this is because I posted just a photo on Instagram and likes, comments, direct messages, model numbers, you know, everything. So you guys are very curious about this. So this is, I don't have a model number or anything like that, but it's a wine enthusiast and it is 72 inches tall. So hopefully you can see that. I am about 5'10", so it is taller. One of the things that I liked about this unit and it's a little bit unlevel, so the door is sticking a little bit. Uh, it's got a good seal, but one of the things, and I'm gonna actually put these, you know, whenever it's all ready, it's freezing outside. I haven't moved it inside yet because it's like 300 pounds. I'm gonna put my boxes up there. But I, I, what I wanted is for these drawers to be able to pull out. So these are not Spanish cedar, so I'm getting trays to put, to put on this. Let's get this out of the way. So I'm getting trays of Spanish cedar to put in there, but all of these pull out. This was something that was a big deal for me because in the humidors that I have where the drawers don't pull out, I gotta pull the drawer, drawer out to look at the cigars that are inside. So there's a bunch of these drawers. They all, they all slide out. Um, I got this on Facebook, it's 400 bucks. It's kind of damaged on the side. And see, like I said, it's, not quite level down there or else this would close pretty well there's it's, you know not perfect condition but for 400 bucks a nice seal i can see everything i'm going to get led lights i'm not going to use this function at all because the compressor dries out the cigars that's not something i know a whole lot about but there you go my little reflection what's up but yeah there we go that's what i'm going to convert into a humidor and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Thanks to Kevin Shahan for all of his help, Cigar Prop. I uh, really appreciate your help, man. Now we gotta fill this thing. Okay, we've got a bunch of stuff delivered from Amazon. We've got this package, that package. There's packages over there. And by the way, there's my humidors that I am replacing. But let's see, we've got, we should have fans, we should have cedar drawers, LED lights. Uh, oh, and hygrometers. We've got stuff to check uh, humidity and temperature. So let's go ahead and see what we got inside. And if you see anything that you like, if you're like, hey, that was a good idea, uh, I wanna get that. Check the link in the description below. We're gonna have all of this stuff so that you can convert the uh, your your wine door or whatever. So let's be honest. I paid four hundred dollars for the big one, and I'm not even gonna use the stuff that makes it expensive. I also have another one. As of right now, my mom and stepdad got it at like a secondhand store, kind of like a Goodwill. It was like twenty five dollars for your college dorm room size fridge. It doesn't have a motor. But going with the plan here, you don't need that. So let's see what we got here. This is a heavy, whoa. This is a heavy duty timer. This is going to spin up the fans, which I will, un which I will get to here in a second. Um, it will spin up the fans at a predetermined time so that they're not always going, but it will help circulate the humidified air inside the humidor. So this is a two pack and I can't yet endorse these. If I, if I like these and I recommend them, you will find the link in the description below. I'm not gonna recommend something to you that I do not like or use myself. So these are the Go V. These are the cheaper ones and then these are the, the more expensive ones. So they're not that much more expensive and these aren't that much less expensive but I figured I would stagger them. You know, these are the ones that show you the historicals. So these are actually the more advanced ones. These are the least, I had it backwards. So on these, these are the thermo hygrometers. This is the H5075 model, and these are the H, these are the H5102s. I went with the ones that re use the AAA batteries. Yes, all of these use AAA batteries instead of like one of those 
those flat nickel sized ones. But these ones, the more advanced ones to show you historicals. So like the maximum humidity, maximum temperature, minimum humidity. And I didn't think I needed that uh, just everywhere. So um, let, me, let me go grab my next box and uh, we'll see what's inside that one. All right, this I expect should be the computer fans. Now, computer fans, and then I got this flat extension cord. It's, it's a little bit flatter, so if I, I wrap it or I have to mess with the seal in the humidor, may, hopefully this one will have a minimal impact on it. But we've got how many? We've got three things on here. This one has two on it. So the fans, and I will go into this and it's got three prongs it's got a ground thing on it that's one thing i always look at for my my extension cords oh so make sure so here is the fan uh hopefully that rattling is not a big deal grab some scissors here to cut this cut that and if this is what I think it is, we'll, we'll talk about it here in a second. So, I'm going to take that and boom. There we go. All right. Let's turn this around. So, what I have here, I've, I have built computers before. And when you're looking at fans, on a computer, the fan just plugs into the motherboard. On these, they're going to plug into this power supply right here. I'll talk about the fans because I chose these specifically for a reason. So you've got your power, which will plug into your heavy duty timer. And this, these are either on or off. If you set the dial here, so again, the description below will have a link to all these. So you have min, off, or max, and you can change the, the speed. You hear that click? That's how you know they're on. Uh, so, uh, these are going to be on and off and dictated by the timer here, but this has a little round plug and the cord you can see right here, it just goes right in there. Like I said, on a computer, you would plug these directly into the motherboard and on a computer, as long as the computer is on, the fans are spinning. The larger the fan, the slower that fan is allowed to spin to circulate air. So I went with these three. This is probably about 15 inches long, but these fans are 120 millimeter fans. So this is operating instructions and it does not even really look like that it's relevant. Um, I'll have to find the Manufacturing everything, and again, I'll link to it uh, below. But the idea sorry, I'm just looking at all these. This is there's three individual 120 millimeter fans. Let's see, if, let's plug it in real quick. And I guess there are some mounting screws. Yeah, mounting screws. It's like they didn't finish mounting this end, huh? Okay, let's turn these on real quick and see what they sound like. For reference, if there is any sound right now, I'm in the kitchen, it's echoey, and that's probably our heater. So here we go, let's turn this on. So that's on low. And that's on high. So the idea is to have, there's another box here. So these three fans may be, you know, doing air like this and on the other side pointing down so you kind of create a circulation effect because your humidity in your humidor and probably the temperature too, it's not going to be the same from the top to the bottom, the front to back. It will change. It will be absolutely different. So by circulating the air, I'm not going to have to circulate or rotate thousands of cigars. All right, let's see what else we got. Okay, so I had to step away for a phone call. Uh, we've got, we've shown you the fan, we've turned it on, on all the way. So again, that little click. So that's, I'm sure this is the wrong term. 
call it a circuit breaker or whatever. So if you leave the fan like halfway and the timer says turn on and it activates the power to, to the outlet, the fan should automatically come on. Inside of a computer, like I said, this is done all automatically. Your computer handles all of that. But since the, the humidor doesn't have a motherboard, I had to figure out a way. So I got ones, you can get ones that are powered by USB, but this one just seemed to be like the an easy-ish way to, way to go. So I'll stick that back in there and try to make it sort of like closed box. I don't know. All right, let's get that aside. And again, we got two sets of those. Honestly, I don't remember. I spent about $160 on what we were seeing in this section of the video. I don't remember off the top of my head which cost the most. Okay, here we go. Now this, I expect this giant box just to have some cedar trays in it. Yeah, okay, hold on. So, these are cedar trays. Now, the the humidor has wooden trays already. You could do metal trays, but what you want is Spanish cedar, and as my friend Kevin, cigar prop Kevin, said you want kiln dried uh, cedar. Now, cedar does two things, and I'm not gonna bullshit you. Cedar does two things. One, it does add flavor, but also it uh, helps you regulate the temperature. You can take the humidity when these are freshly cut logs, the humidity is like in the 90s, you dry them out and that humidity drops down to, I think it's like under 10%. So it goes from almost 100% down to almost 0%. And it helps regulate the humidity. It will, dry cedar will pull humidity from your cigars, but it also helps with mold. So we cut the top one off here. Most humidors are not Spanish cedar all the way around. So um, they might be lined with it. It would cost a fortune to line this six foot tall humidor with, with cedar. But the part that uh, is gonna touch the cigars, that's gonna be, that's gonna be the Spanish cedar. So. This should be one, two, three, four, five. Um, these are these specific ones are from Prestige Import Group. Again, links in the description below. Can't really smell it. To be perfectly honest with you, but there we go. Spanish cedar trays, and the idea, the shelf, the idea is to take like three across and then two in the back. So I'm pretty sure that these five cost me about $75. So they're not super cheap. That's what, 13 or $14 a piece, maybe $14 a piece. And I have like eight shelves in the humidor. So this is a problem, other than the cigars, the cedar, probably the most expensive uh, part but my cigars will go in here and these will go on to the other wood trays. Again, you could use metal or whatever, but the part where that's touching the cigars, where the cigars are going to interact with, swap oils, etc. <laughs> that sounds kind of gross, uh, will, be, will be the Spanish cedar. So let me unbox these and we'll see how they fit in the, in the humidor. Uh, Cause I, and, and maybe I will secure them with like, zip ties or something to make sure they don't slide around. But let me unbox all of these real quick. Actually, I don't even have to do much. We can pop these open just like this. And can we slide them out? Just so nothing flops out. Ooh. Terrible sound, terrible sound. All right, boxes empty. Now, the shelves in the humidor don't pull all of the way out, which is fantastic. The next step will be to put them on there to see how they fit. Okay, so skip ahead. We've done the unboxing. Move this in from the garage, which was a pain because it's like 200 and 
250 pounds. For reference, I am uh, with shoes on, probably about 5'11", and it is taller than me up here. Let me flip the camera around. So what we've got set up here, these are the drawers we looked at. Here's the fan. Here's one humidor that I've got, another humidor, another humidor, another humidor. This one's not totally full, but this one's all full of uh, Siri V's. And then I've got these two bags that are kind of like a, what did I write on here? Help yourself. So I've got some of those. What we got here, and I just got this idea off of watching a YouTube video. This is baking soda and water and a beer. Uh, baking soda and water so whenever you wipe this down on the inside all of the surfaces and stuff uh, it doesn't it, when it dries it's gonna leave like a white residue that you can just wipe off again with distilled water if I didn't just say that distilled water so anything that you are having your with your humid or your, your cigars you want distilled water so just to give you guys a little bit closer look at to what I have here this is a wine enthusiast if it's plugged in you can turn the lights on and there's a light and there's a light which doesn't do just a whole lot of good when you have all of these shells so if you haven't seen the whole thing that's the whole thing we're gonna put LED lights all around here so you don't have to worry with those things you can see all of your cigars this would tell you what the temperature is inside this would tell you what you have it set to but this fan this compressor uh, I guess and again I'm no mechanic or I don't know anything about this stuff but uh, that pulls all of the moisture out what I will show you though I was very excited about this this hole allows this extension cord to go all the way down here we're gonna plug in the fans Probably a, uh, a cigar oasis down here, and then the fans will circulate the air. We also got to power the um, the uh, the lights. But that hole was plugged with this thing, and I think it might have like a filter in it. I don't know, but uh, just so that you know, we pulled this backing off. There you go. And you should be able to see, you, know, you can see right through there. And we've got this extension cord that'll go to the wall. Don't want it to scrape up our, our tile floors so it's on cardboard. But <clears throat> these scratches right here are why it was discounted. It's not in per it's not perfect condition. I, just, I told you I paid 400 bucks for this. And there's a couple things like right here where the seal the seals good but the plastic holding it in and you could probably put silicone or something like that uh, but this ridge there you go this ridge is probably great for those LED lights uh, and then I was gonna tell you that we I was gonna show you uh, that I had all of the shelves in there and um, they do fit I'll show you you'll see that here uh, at some point in this video or the next one if this ends up becoming a series but we've got two that fit basically side by side boom and then boom or yeah and then three across the back and it fits uh really nice so that's what we're working on just wanted to to keep you guys uh or include this in the video training again this is 70 72 inches tall and from here to there is 30 no it's like 32 or 33 and then like 30 deep but that's the next stage i gotta clean it and then the hygrometers are being calibrated right now they're in ziploc bags with bovida packs at 72 so I'm just getting those calibrated. Yeah, and uh, let's see, let's just close the door and you can see what we're dealing with here. No LEDs just yet, but isn't that gonna be cool? I think it's gonna be awesome. Really looking forward to it. On to the next, well, 
it's got to clean and then on to the next step all right if you've been following along on the humidor build we have some new items here uh, from cigar oasis and i think we've got some really cool stuff i think they hooked me up last night i just super saturated with the uh, humidification right there you can see the humidity got up to 91% because that just keeps pumping it out. That's why you don't want to use a regular humidifier. This is the Cigar Oasis Magna 3. All right, so let's see what we got. We talked about this. These are really good. I like these. What is this? Ooh, a new lighter. Always a plus with a Cigar Oasis logo on it. And this, I think, I think this is the auxiliary fan kit. Auxil yep, that's literally what it's called. So, tiny, tiny fans. We'll have to see how well those work, how effective they are. Because right now, if you can see that at all, those are 320 millimeter computer fans. They're up there and they're up there and they're circulating the humidity. So we're gonna put the Oasis here and then we're gonna use the fans and stuff to circulate all of the humid air. So hopefully the fan kit, let's check that out. Here we go. The Oasis Magna 3. That should be perfect. Yeah, this is great packaging. Great packaging. So these have Wi-Fi and you pay 20 bucks a year or something. And you can control your, you can monitor it and control your Cigar Oasis from anywhere. And definitely gonna be doing that. Cards, uh, instruction manual, beads. And this is an improvement that they made over, I think, the 2.0, maybe? And one advantage of the Magna, because those have foam. These beads, there's way more than 100, way more than I thought. But you pour these beads in, they swell up to um, marble size with, to help with the humidity. Controllers, power cord, and I guess the rest is the unit. So what's left, and this is the unit. So we're gonna pour the beads in here, fill it, I'm sure the instructions are gonna code for this. Let's get it all set up, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how well this performs on a humidor this size. Now this is an airtight seal, and I've been talking to Kevin from Cigar Shop, uh, Cigar Prop, and this being airtight is interesting because it's it's airtight whereas these they're not really supposed to be airtight um yeah it's just what it is but this should have a pretty good seal on it oh check this out i don't know if you guys saw this from the last time check this out i'm pretty excited about boom led lights so we're gonna put this all up so it's been about a week since we set all of this stuff up. Now I came up with a list of the things that I wanted to wrap this video up with. So let's start with the very first one. You saw in one of the videos, we're down here in the bottom. When, before we unboxed the Cigar Oasis Magna 3.0, we had just a regular household humidifier in there. And that's the one we have in our bedroom. It's really dry outside and it just continually pumps air. And I did that I kind of wanted to, to saturate everything inside. I had empty boxes and like there is now, cedar from all these boxes. And cedar does a really great job of helping regulate humidity. It holds it, it releases it, holds it, releases it, and that's why I did that. But I will tell you that I came home, we went out to dinner, I left it just like I showed you guys, and there was water on the floor. Water had, had just, sat it, it didn't there's nowhere to go so these shelves are sealed and that's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine with me but they're sealed they don't absorb 
any water, but I did want what could absorb water to absorb water. That happened, water ran out, I had to grab a towel and everything like that. So don't do that. Make the, the investment, just get the right cigar oasis. Don't look at packets of, of humidified stuff. Do you know how many packets you would have to use in this? The, the Cigar Oasis is, is doing a fantastic job. So I wanted to tell you, don't use, against maybe your, especially if you have a wood one, because that would ruin the wood. You get standing water in your Spanish cedar humidor and it's going to swell, it's going to do what wood does and it's gonna ruin your humidor. So, so don't do that. I'm lucky that it, it didn't last that long and I don't have wood on the sides. So one of the other things that I wanted to tell you about, we, we did the unboxing of the fans, we talked about the fans, we talked about the fans on the Cigar Oasis, which by the way, if you hear a kind of high-pitched, um, it's not really a whine, but that's those smaller fans on the Cigar Oasis. So let's look and I'll show you where the fans are that, that we placed inside the, the ones that we unboxed, okay? So we've got some here in the, the back. Just be aware that every time you open the, the door like this, all of the humidification comes, comes out. It's a little bit depressing. But on the back here, you can see right here those three 120 millimeter fans. The Cigar Oasis is pushing humidity towards the back wall. And then this fan, hopefully, theoretically anyway, is taking that humidified air and just shooting it up uh, the back of the humidor. Now up here on the top shelf, hopefully you can see right in there, and where the other one is lengthwise, these are just front to back. So those are those fans. And you can see here that there's a gap under them. These function much better when there is airflow or there's a gap below them to pull the, the air through. Might actually need to flip those over and make sure I've got them where the air is pointing down. That's, that's the goal. So you have air pointing down here. You have air being blown up from back there and it creates this vortex of humidified air. At least that's, that's the goal. Another thing that I will show you is we talked about the auxiliary fans from Cigar Oasis and you can see right back here. So there we go. There is one of those tiny fans. I just used the adhesive that they sent with it and mounted it. The idea with that one is to have some air blowing from the back to the front. So there's one and we go down a few rows and there's the other one sitting right back there. So we have two small fans. We have the bigger fans that are back there. And then of course the Cigar Oasis. Back in there, uh, there there's fans blowing the air up. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the Oasis controller. Now we'll zoom in on that. And as you can see, there's a couple warnings, 39.2. I have it set to 65 and the ambient temperature is 72.3. And you can sign up and get these alerts and notifications and actually be able to control or set this humidity, the 65 from your phone. It's $20 a year. I've avoided it in the past, but I'm like, you know what? For this kind of investment, $20 a year, I can do that. So the reason why it's in the back, not just because I wanted to hide it. In fact, I want that information, but I did run the cable all the way down there because that's what regulates the Oasis. And I wanted it in the back because I'm thinking that the humidity in the back of the humidor, 30 inches away from the door that opens, is maybe slightly more moderate and might fluctuate less than having it right up here at the front. Because as soon as you open this door, every second this opens, you lose about a tenth of a percentage of humidity. That's not a scientific number, that's just me watching the number on the, the face fall. So theoretically, putting it in the back, maybe some more stabilization and the Cigar Oasis isn't going to over humidify or anything like that because it's fluctuating less. Plus I'm getting alerts, on app alerts and text message alerts. So every time it drops below a certain threshold, which I set, I'm getting notifications all over the place, which is good when I'm not here. But if I'm, if I'm over here doing this and picking out cigars and doing videos and stuff, I don't need alerts blowing up my phone. So that's one of the reasons why 
I put it in the back. They also provide a pretty long cord for all of the fans. They could be higher and actually further away than they are. And the controller, the controller is about as far away from this as possible. It goes up the back, so that's probably, I don't know, a four foot cord, something like that. Okay, the last thing that I wanna talk about is just monitoring your humidity. Now, I have a other service that I have used for a long time and the little devices and I don't know how reliable they've become. You gotta calibrate them a lot. Now while these are brand new, they seem to be really accurate. So I'm gonna show you where I've placed the, the hygrometers and thermometers. So right up here at the top, and I'm probably gonna move this one down, but these are those Govies that we're talking about, and they have a, an app interface. So far, I really like them. They're about $10 a piece, 10 to maybe 12 for the ones that have the historical information, but that's like a quarter of the price of some of the other ones that are out there on the market. They have Bluetooth, so they connect to a tablet, which I keep nearby. I think this door blocks a lot of those signals, so I have to keep the tablet fairly close. When it's really far away, it, it struggles to get some of the, the syncing data. So I'm gonna put one here, um, about basically equally spread. And the reason why I do that is they are, they're not even reading the same thing right now. 43, 38. 43.9 on the Oasis controller, and then 50. So 43 to 50. And I think these bottom shelves are gonna be more humid than the top shelves, even with the circulation. We've, there's tons of debate, and kinda makes sense that humidity rises. However, the humidity down here is, is closer to the source. So one of the things, this is just a tip, and I'm gonna have to test this because I used a, a device to, to test the internal humidity of these, um, these cigars right here, and then some cigars from the top. I think I'm going to put boxes down here just to, so they're slightly more insulated. The boxes still breathe and all that kind of stuff. But I think the humidity down here is gonna be higher than it is up there. So just, as with everything, every humidor is different, every cigar is different, every house that the humidor is in is different. So just, just test. Um, we, it's taken about, what, a month? When did we get this? Three or four weeks? It's taken three or four weeks to get all of this set up, but it's been a week, like I said, since the last section of the video. We've moved it into the corner. All the cords are hidden. There's a lot of actually electronics in here for something that's not actually plugged in. Uh, so a lot of electronics. I'm loving the, the lights. All of these things are linked in the description below. I really, I, I watched a lot of videos like you're doing. I think I made pretty good educated decisions. So we like the lights, a little button here hidden on the side. I love the lights. I like the Govies. They have, or we bought uh, command strips to attach them to the walls. The shelves here, um, I will link to these also. I got five and I could fit five on a shelf, but they're $75 a piece. So you'd be up to almost $700 just in shelves. So I took trays from other humidors and I'm just gonna store boxes. So you can do whatever you want. I really like the, the drawers, they're nice and deep. That's two of these right here. And then I've, I don't know if you can tell, but these are kind of mismatched uh, drawers right here. Uh, that I've got singles and then plenty of boxes, but I'm very excited about how this turned out. Just check garage sales, check Facebook Marketplace, check, I don't know, this one, you can see here, we talked about this probably at the beginning where it's just, it's just scratched up, but you put a flag over it, you put stickers over it, something like that, and, and it's good. I'm about to buy another one where the compressor doesn't work, it needs coolant, not even running that. So that's got a great deal. And then at a secondhand store, like a Goodwill, a family member got one of the college dorm room size ones for like 20 bucks. So you can find these deals and then, you know, this was 400 and then if we did spend, would I say $700 on, 700 on trays, the Cigar Oasis is 300. That's about 13 or $1,400. So that's not nothing, but if you're looking at buying one of these, you'd be looking at easily spending more or the same for something that is smaller. So that's how you convert a wine refrigerator 
this one, wine enthusiast, into a humidor that I am very happy with that will hold thousands of cigars, way more than I actually have at this moment. So that's how you do it. If you want to see a humidor tour and talk about the cigars and all that other stuff, drop a comment in the comment section below. I think I'm going to do one of those and go more in depth into what's inside the last one that I did has had like 13 or 14,000 views. So I think, I think you guys might be interested in that, but drop a comment in the, uh, the comment section below. But that's how you do the conversion. If you like this video, make sure you click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you get notified every time we do something else cool like this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Ellery Wells from CigarScore.com, the best place to find and rate where to smoke cigars. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, happy smoking. Thanks for watching. I'm Ellery Wells from CigarScore.com, the best place to find and rate where to smoke cigars. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Not a weighted. <laughs>